continue this search would be futile. We're looking at this as a suicide, but we still don't know what really happened. I know what happened. Detective Hatcher, the defendant, Robert Savage, has been presented to this court as the proprietor of an import-export enterprise. Do you have any knowledge of his involvement in any other business? Yes, the drug trade. And what was the profession of the murder victim, Freddie Morris? Freddie was a drug dealer. He worked for the defendant. He was also a snitch. What does snitch mean exactly? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance? Overruled, I'd like to hear the detective's definition. A snitch provides police with intelligence on a suspect's criminal activities. And did Mr. Morris provide intel on the defendant's narcotics activities? He did. When you found Mr. Morris dead, what condition was he in, specifically? Specifically, he was shot in the head. He had his tongue cut out of his mouth. And the medical examiner said it probably happened while he was still alive. Afterwards, did you venture to the defendant's office to question him? I did. Let myself in unannounced. And Mr. Savage was with a woman who was on her knees in front of him. And you, you get the picture. I believe we do. Please continue. There was a gun on his desk, and I knew if he got to that weapon, I'd be a dead man. Objection, Your Honor. Conclusion. Sustained. Thank you, Judge. Detective Hatcher, did you fear for your life when you saw the gun? Of course I did. I subdued him, and I let the woman get away. And she took the gun with her? The girl took the gun with her, yes. And neither, neither had been seen since. Your Honor. Some important information has just come to light. May we meet in your chambers, please? They've been in there 30 minutes. What do you think you're talking about? Plea bargain, maybe? Savage wouldn't come to a parking violation. Detective Hatcher's rule number five. It ain't over till it's over. Damn straight. Seven-letter word for surrender. Abdicate. That's eight letters. Stop staring. How's the judge get a wife like that? Okay. Please be seated. feeling about this defense counsel has informed me that during voir dire juror number 10 failed to disclose that her son was enrolled in the police academy she didn't intend to deceive the court but failed to recognize how such an omission could affect the outcome of this trial what defense counsel feels that juror number 10 may have an inherent bias against any defendant especially one accused of such an egregious crime and i agree with counsel on this point no and regrettably am compelled to declare a mistrial jurors you are hereby dismissed mr adams your client is free to go you're gonna let this guy walk are you joking you see me laughing detective blue again hatcher i'll be in touch real soon you just gave this guy a pass to go kill again Detective, you are a decorated officer. Try behaving like one. Why don't you act like a judge? Detective, you are in contempt of this court. Deputy, take him away and put him away. This court is adjourned. Just relax. I got it. I got it. Sink. Nothing worse. Did you see any of our friends? Oh, yeah. It's a constant party in there. It's old fat faced Chuck. He said to say hi, by the way. Really? I always actually kind of liked him. 
<laughs> That's good, because he really likes you. <laughs> How come your alarm wasn't set? Keep forgetting the code? Well, set it, OK? He said he's coming after you. Hey, let him. Bring it on. You know, the captain isn't too happy about what went down in court. Oh, you think I am? Remember we got savage for trafficking? Yeah, that acquittal was messed up. How about homicide? Actually, the charge was vehicular manslaughter. Just saying. So he ran over the guy 12 times. I call that homicide. Yeah, well, hung jury didn't know what to call, so he walked. He bought that jury. You're obsessed. Damn right. Hatch, the DA isn't retrying the case. What? No, wait. You know what? I don't care. Liar, you do care. Deeply, that's what I love about you. Hey, did you just say love? Shut up. When are you going to play something for me on the piano? I don't play anymore. Hatch, Brenda's been gone for, what, two years now? How long are you going to keep moping around? Hey. All right, all right. Well, get in the shower and go get pretty. We got to get going. Where are we going? Awards dinner. No, 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 Your no. Your no, commendation. No, yeah, no, come on. I'm not going that We're going, party. that's that. Now give me a Diet Cola for the road. Caffeine free. Hey. What, what, what is it? We just found Freddie Morris's tongue. Is that you? Clear. Clear. Just savage, playing games. No, this is a warning. This guy, he gets off on your obsession with him and that makes you a target. Hatch, he just got access to your home. Set your alarm, damn it. Every day. All right, go take a shower. I'll call in the tongue. <laughs> Promise me you won't get drunk and do something stupid tonight. Hatch. Sure. Dee Dee. Oh, you're in a dress. You look amazing. <clears throat> what the hell happened? Piss off, Whirly. Bob Worley compliments me, but you haven't said a word on how I look. What? You look nice. That's too late. Can we get a tequila on the rocks and a diet cola, please? Hey, detective? No hard feelings, I hope. For the jail time? I only have myself to blame for that. Good answer. Hello there, Michelle. Give me a Rob Roy. Yes, sir. What do you say? I said you look hot and can't figure out why we're not having sex. <laughs> well, I hope you told him it's because I like sex that lasts more than 60 seconds. Mm. Mm -mm. great pleasure to introduce our next honoree, a man of integrity and courage, a mentor to his fellow officers, Detective Sergeant Duncan Hatcher.
Thank you, Captain Gerard. Thank you, everybody. I, um, I can't really accept this award because I didn't crack that case. The one who solved it is someone I'm proud to call my, my friend and my partner, Dee Dee Bowen. Dee Dee, come on up here and accept this award. This is yours. Come on, give it up for Dee Dee, everybody. Now you're gonna go get drunk? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. <clears throat> this is Laird. Hi, Duncan Hatcher. This is a very nice thing you did back there. I'm not always nice. You know what pisses me off? Apart from my husband. Mm-hmm. A woman who's too beautiful for me. How sad. A hero who underestimates himself. Good night, detective. Hey, um... When will we see each other again? We won't. Yes, we will. Any judge that sends me to jail, I make it a point to seduce his wife. Hey. Hey. Why is it after a few drinks you turn into such a complete ass? Who are you? Hey, Dee Dee. Something's gone down at the Laird house. A shooting. What? Why, why you got all these baseball cards in here? I collect them. Why, is that a problem? No, I didn't think we had secrets. You okay? You feel funny about this? I mean, you and the judge. Just because we got a history doesn't mean I want him dead. No, uh, the shots woke me up and I ran as fast as I could and that's, that's when I saw my wife slumped in a chair. Lord, sometimes I think Savannah is nothing more than a swamp. What do you got? 38 caliber, straight through the heart, frontal entry. The CSI boys are in there now trying to get a name off the guy. But you got the shooter in custody? <laughs> what? The shooter is Mrs. Laird. Anything? 
Jimmy to window to get in. They found a tire iron under some bushes. No car keys, no money, no ID. And supposedly neither the judge nor his wife recognize him. Let's go talk to him. Mrs. Laird, please go over everything that happened. Things got hot in the jacuzzi, so we went upstairs to make love, and she forgot to turn on the alarm. Judge, please. You're sitting in as courtesy. Now, Mrs. Laird? Well, you heard my husband. And then at around 12.30, I came downstairs to get something to drink. Every night, chronic insomnia. This is not your courtroom, Judge. This is a crime scene, okay? Mrs. Laird? Well, I was in the kitchen getting myself a glass of milk when I heard a noise. from the drawer. Why didn't you call 911? I should have by now. If I had to do it again, I would. I own several guns. She knows where they are. I had to take lessons to learn how to use them properly. If you don't shut up, I'm going to throw you out of your own house, okay? You got it? You're a good shot, Mrs. Laird. Now, can we continue? You get the gun and... Who the hell are you? scared I couldn't believe what I just done and that was it yes and you said you found your wife slumped in a chair so I'm allowed to talk now yeah please <sighs> I thought she was dead then I ran to her and that's when I saw the man on the floor Elise was in shock but it was clear that she had interrupted an attempted burglary Okay, we might have more questions in the morning, but that's enough for tonight. Thank you. Sorry to put you through this, Miss Laird. Judge. I'm just doing your job. I'll see you out. Actually, Judge, there's just one more thing I'd like to check out in the study. Do you mind? I won't be long. I was drunk and, uh, and angry. And I know it's no excuse for what I said. I just want you to know that it wasn't, it wasn't about you. Mm. Wasn't it? Identified the body from the Laird house? Gary Ray Trotter from Baltimore. Small stuff and no burglary charges. All of a sudden the guy's a burglar? Yeah, and why rob a home without gloves or tools of the trade? Just a handgun? Makes no sense. Mrs. Laird's hiding something. 
Then there's the trajectory of Trotter's bullet. See, it doesn't match her story. His round, it went straight up. So, what we got on the Laird case? We were just talking about that. Sounds like to me a burglar shot in the act, right? Maybe not. We're checking it out. Sorry for showing up unannounced. We just need to clear up a few things. Overnight, is there anything that you thought of that you might have left out? Apparently, I didn't get the memo. What now, Hatcher? Your captain's already told me this is being wrapped up. We just need to clarify a few things. The dead man, his name's Gary Ray Trotter, repeat offender. He ever end up in your courtroom? Maybe he had a grudge? No, I've never seen him before. Why would he burglarize your home? I'm rich. Look, all I know is that this man tried to kill my wife. You sure he shot first, Mrs. Laird? Yes, that's what I told you. The trajectory of Trotter's bullet, it suggests otherwise. This is the way we see it. Who the hell are you? Of course he fired first. After the trauma that my wife has been through, you're going to stand there and accuse her of lying to you? Our apologies. Just had to check. Thank you. We'll see yourselves out. Detective Hatch. Can I have your card? In case I remember any other details. Hey, give me keys. Patch, I'm driving. Just give me the keys. I'm driving. Deal with it. I don't believe a word she says. She's pretty. You think? I saw how you two were eyeballing each other. Think with your brain, okay? You know what I see when I look at her? One lonely person. Funny, that's what I see when I look at you. Guess what I found out about her? She was a waitress at his country club when they met. But before that, she was a waitress at a low-rent strip club outside of town. Every strip club's low-rent? I wouldn't know. She killed Trotter for a reason, but it wasn't burglary. Well, her marriage to the judge sure raised some eyebrows. She has her critics out there. And enemies. She gives women a bad name. Wow. Oh, about chicken. Put in some money or get lost. Why aren't Napoli's going missing? A private investigator? Mm-hmm. That scumbag? Yep. A lot of people didn't like him very much. Then you should have a lot of suspects. Yes, I will. Why don't you reply to my note? You got something to say to me? You come down to the precinct, okay? Got that? It's too sensitive. Did you tell your partner about my note? No. Come here. Good. I know why Gary Ray Trotter came to the house. He was hired to kill me. By who? By my husband. Why would Cato Laird want you dead? I can't tell you that. I risked a lot by coming here. Cato left the house early to play golf at the country club, so I came to you because... I underestimate myself? No. Because I trust you. Really? The guy who said he wanted to sleep with you? A hitman? Come on. Why would your husband want to knock off the woman who gets him all hot and steamy in the jacuzzi? You're a bastard. Yeah, I can be. Don't speak. Yeah? Well, we found a post-it note in Napoli's office with the name Gary Ray Trotter on it. Maybe we should talk to Laird. Napoli's been a witness in his courtroom. 
Pick me up in 30. Come on, talk. I always set the alarm before going to bed. That night, Cato stopped me from doing it. Before or after the hot sex? He wanted Trotter to get into the house. After I was dead, he could truthfully say that he had prevented me from setting the alarm, blaming himself, winning everyone's pity. Brilliant. He has you all fooled. Oh, please. If I'm going to buy this sob story, I got to hear a motive, so give me one. I can't risk telling you, not yet. Hey, this isn't a game. You went into that study to kill Trotter. You fired first. It's called murder. Yeah, I made a mistake coming here. Yeah, you're right. Because you thought we'd end up in bed together and I'd drop the investigation. Uh-uh. You can leave now. You have to let go of me first. Is he eating alone? I suppose he... Detective. Well, even you can't spoil my mood today, Hatcher. I just shot the best round of my life. Join us? Us? My wife insisted on celebrating with me. Ah, there she is. Bye, sweetheart. Mm. Detectives, this is a surprise. Ever heard of a private investigator named Napoli? Yes, uh, he's been in my court several times as a witness. Why? Mrs. Laird, do you know him? No, I've never heard of him. The man you shot and killed made an appointment to see him. But his secretary says Trotter never showed up. What are you implying? Don't you find it odd that after Trotter's killed in your home, his name ends up on the desk of a PI who happens to have gone missing? Ever had any contact with Napoli outside the courtroom? No. Hmm. Where were you this morning, ma'am? She was at home. Look, my wife and I have told you all that we know, so if there uh, isn't anything else... Nothing else? Enjoy your lunch. I will. He's lying. Yeah. And what was that where were you this morning all about? Trying to trip him up. They're both lying. Hey, no secrets between partners. You taught me that my first day. You think I'm holding something back? You tell me. I'm gonna stick around here and keep an eye on him. Go see if you can help dig up something on Napoli, find out if he's dead or alive. And if he's still breathing? We have a little chat with him. You tell me he's here to get me here, then you waltz in? Well, you trying to throw me off my game? No. No, I'm here to help in case he lies. What about your lies? I've been watching you. He sure doesn't look like a man trying to kill his wife to me. Oh, but I look like a killer. You are one. You're still here? Just leaving. I need to uh, speak with you privately. I'm okay with you? Of course. I'll be in my office. What did he say to you? He thinks you're covering something up. Are you? Hello, my lovely. Did you get what I asked for? Tomorrow night at the club. Robert Savage always delivers. I should have told you this before, but uh, I couldn't say anything about Napoli in front of my wife. I hired him to follow her. I thought she was having an affair. Satisfied? Was she? Yes, but then I decided to not do anything about it. I love her, and I don't want to lose her. Who's the affair with? Coleman Greer. Coleman, Coleman Greer, the baseball star, the one who killed himself? You want to have sex with my wife, don't you? I 
If I said no, you'd be insulted. women like this. I picked you up, remember? Oh, yeah. Oh. Hey, what was your name again? and Gordy's ready to deal. I'll be right down. Hey, I gotta go do a little work thing. Yeah, me too. Huh. Savage wants to know if you're a good lay. What? I'll tell him you're okay. Savage? Smitty's is a total dive. How could you pick someone up in that dump? She picked me up, and I don't need a lecture. I gotta get my house checked for bugs now. Yeah, well, you better get yourself checked, too. Yeah, Gordy? I gotta go to the bathroom. Me, too. We're gonna book you on second-degree murder. You know that, right, Gordy? What? I just hit him with a bottle. I was high. He called me shorty. I hate that. It's all right. Relax. The man you assaulted last night has been treated and released. I'm talking about Freddy. Freddie Morris, one of Savage's boys. I had nothing to do with Freddie. Look, Savage scares me, and if Freddie had been smarter, he... He would. Would have been scared, too. Wouldn't have been cooperating with us. Is that what you're saying? What? What do you want? I want Savage. You give him to me. Something that sticks, I'm gonna make all your problems go away, brother. <laughs> Is that what you told Freddy? I'd like to keep my tongue. Thank you. Hey, Ray. What's up? At least Laird was having an affair with Coleman Greer. What? When did you find that out? Yesterday. Wait, and you didn't call me immediately? Is there anything else you're holding back? No. No. Look, if Elise Laird had something to do with Coleman Greer's suicide, I'm gonna kill her. Spoken like a true baseball fan. All right, look, I want to get her in here alone. See if there's anything to this. You get her here alone, I'll give you 10 bucks. Say, make it 20. I didn't think Cato knew about my relationship with Coleman. And I didn't know he was having me followed. Now, just so we're clear, I was not having an affair with Coleman. We're friends since high school. You expect us to believe that you and Coleman Greer are sneaking around from one hotel to the next, and you're not? My supposed sex life does seem to intrigue you. What does Coleman have to do with any of this? Napoli was blackmailing you about this affair. Sent Trotter to your place to collect the money, and that's why you killed him. Right? To keep your little sugar daddy. <sighs> you detectives have quite the imagination. Are you arresting me? Not today. Have a nice day. I know those eyes. They're the I want to get you into bed eyes. She was flirting with me. You owe me 20 bucks. I just got a message from one angry judge. Any idea why he's calling? 
I have contacts, detective, all over the place, so I learn about things quickly, including when the police drag my wife into the station house. Good for you. Why are we here? I felt we should clear the air all around. Now, I've told Elise about hiring Napoli to follow her. I'm not proud of that. Now, I deeply regret my business with him, especially if it led to the shooting of Mr. Trotter, no matter how roundabout the connection was. But I'm hoping that by being open with you, we can put this regrettable incident behind us. Tell him what you told me. I was a shoulder for Coleman to cry on. He was depressed. His boyfriend was leaving him. Wait, boyfriend? Tell him everything. Coleman was gay. And he was in love with his teammate, Tony Esteban. That woman is a snake. Coleman Greer was not gay. No hey, way. Let's just be objective here, okay? Uh, shut up. Look, everything Elise Laird says is a lie. She has that judge wrapped around her little finger. And you know what? I think she's pretty close to having you wrapped around it, too. Oh, yeah? You got, you got something to say about how I'm doing my job? Just say it. Hatch, be careful. All right? That's all I'm saying. Be careful. Okay. Note to self. Be careful. Got it. Let's go. How does it feel to be back? Feels like a lifetime ago. Hatch doesn't believe a word I'm saying. Oh, you'll convince her. One personnel file straight up. A real life hero. Master's degree in criminology. Son of a Baptist preacher. A bit of a righteous rogue, which means you're in a tight spot. What's going on in that pretty little head of yours? Revenge. What are you looking for? The repairman didn't do a good job on the bullet hole. Contractor's card to have it redone. Got something for you. Dress. You go to Atlanta alone? Without telling me? And did it ever occur to you that I would have liked to have met Esteban? He's on my fantasy team. Let's stick to the case. So what do we think? I'll tell you what I think. Coleman Greer wasn't gay and neither is Esteban. Didi, I met the guy. He's gay. Captain, here's the way I see it. Napoli, he knows about Coleman and Esteban, so he's blackmailing them through Elise Laird. She shoots Trotter to save Coleman's career. I don't think this is some burglary gone south. And maybe Mrs. Laird is also involved in the disappearance of Napoli. All right, let's get the Lairds in here in the morning, 10 o'clock. Tell them the lawyer up. You got it, Captain. Tony Esteban signed card right there. And that's supposed to stop me from being pissed off at you. His penmanship sucks. All right, what's your motive, Hatch? Same as yours. Solve the case. Police? It's taking so long. I want to see you in that dress. You have great taste. I 
Hello. Judge, it's Hatcher. Detective, what now? Captain wants you and your wife to come down to headquarters tomorrow, 10 a.m. Why? I don't know. You're the judge. Figure it out. You might want to bring an attorney. I just might do that. Thank you, detective. What is it? Don't worry. I'll take care of you. Alive. Whose house is this? Belongs to a friend. It's not about Savage. I figured using his name would get you here. Will you sneak out on your husband? He went to the country club. Look, please, just, just put away your gun. I shot Trotter in self-defense. That's the truth. You lied to get me here. And now I'm telling you the truth. Talk to Tony Esteban about you. He don't like you very much. See, well, I don't like him very much either. Sir. I met him at a party once. Yeah, he told me about the party. You got naked and then you stalked him. <laughs> oh, right. You're going to believe that? More than I believe you. Tony came on to me. He has issues. I did nothing with him. He treated Coleman badly. Oh, he treated Coleman badly, but Coleman still was in love with him, right? I don't think we get to choose who we fall in love with. Do you? See, when I first met you, I thought you shot Trotter to save Coleman's career. Then I figured you did it to save yourself. What did Napoli have on you, huh? Pictures, videos? Do you even care? Here's how I think it went down. Your husband, he pays Napoli off, but Napoli's an enterprising scum, so he comes after you for more dough. Sends Trotter to collect, you shoot him, your husband buys that self-defense story. Now we're down to Napoli. Huh? He's the only way they can ruin it. Where's he? I get it right? What's it gonna take to get you to believe me? What, turn up dead? Yeah, that'd be a start. Please, please stop investigating me and start investigating Cato Laird. Oh, come on. Why would he want you dead? I can't tell you that. Not until I know for sure that you believe me. Then you're out of luck. No, hey. Hey. You know, you can stop acting now because you got what you wanted. My career's probably over. So is this case. The captain's going to have my ass. Well, it's not what I wanted. Well, it's what we got, okay? 
So I crossed the line. I got to come clean. It was crazy. If I had the chance, I'd do it again. If you are a murderer. Please. Please, I'm in danger. You have to believe me. Be at the station tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Lawyer, you're up and don't be late. Mrs. Laird. My name is Myron Napoli. Start the car. Drive. Hello? When? Okay, thanks, Tony. We'll be right there. Morning. What's wrong? They just found Napoli dead. I bet you 50 bucks that bitch Elise Laird is involved. They just found his body next to a car registered to her, and she's missing too. Pretty. Uh, gunshot to the abdomen. Close range, probably bled out. Alright, right, they found a purse, a wallet inside, and an ID belonging to Elise Laird. And a woman's sandal right there. What's it gonna take to get you to believe me? Turn up dead? Let me see those. Oh, look at that. What is it? I don't know. Piece of clothing, maybe. My wife, tell me what happened. We don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Judge, you recognize this? From my wife's dress. Was she pushed or did she jump? However it happened, she ain't lied. Okay, guys, this case is our number one priority. I mean, how the hell does Napoli get to Elise Laird? Huh? Kidnap her from the house? No sign of a struggle there. Napoli's dead. Where's Elise? Well, we've got choppers, dive teams, and canine units looking for her. Maybe she shot him and then jumped. What? Why would she want to kill herself? Judge, you know what? It's not good for you to be here with all this. Maybe you should go home. Don't you worry about me, detective. All right, ballistics confirmed that the 380 caliber pistol used to kill Napoli wasn't his. Napoli's gun was a 38. What does that mean? That means your wife was armed. We checked your house. One of the guns you listed is missing. 380. 
I don't believe this. You people think that my wife left our house on her own with a gun in order to meet up with this man and kill him? Judge, I think you should go home. When we have some news, we'll, we'll let you know. Elise did not kill herself. You find her. Worley, really see if you can find out where Napoli was before he met up with Elise, okay? Good morning. What are you thinking, Captain? I think her life went from good to bad real fast. This thing with Trotter could wash down his self-defense, but no matter what happened with Napoli, it gives her a second dead man on her hands. Even if she didn't go to jail, Laird's life is finished, his career is finished, and so is her fancy way of life. Maybe she jumped because she wanted to end it. You all right? I'm just kind of exhausted. This case and, and complications. Two victims died staring at the face of Elise Laird. This is not complicated, Hatch. You have feelings for her, right? Isn't that what's going on? How's it going? A couple days, still nothing, huh? Well, the captain just told the media that the rescue operation is not a recovery mission. We really messed this one up. No, we're still following leads. Worley found a taxi driver who took Napoli to Miss Larry's Mercedes. CSI found a tracking device planted in her car. We're making headway. And the judge just offered a reward to help find her. Hey, we got a witness who saw Elise Laird with Robert Savage the night before Napoli's murder. With Savage? Who's the witness? It was last week, the day I got arrested. Saw Mrs. Laird at the White Tie and Tails. The strip club. She was with Savage, talking. They seemed like real friendly. You're lying, Gordy. You just want that reward money. I don't buy the Savage connection. You don't always think straight when it comes to Savage. It was postmarked the day that Napoli was murdered and my wife disappeared. in a pile of mail that's been sitting there. This is why Napoli was blackmailing your wife? I got a witness that saw her with Robert Savage a week ago, but these... these are taking over a period of time. It would appear so. Since he sent these to me, I suppose he intended to do the same thing in my case. He must have stumbled on these when he was following at least for me. Coleman Greer... That's one thing, but Robert Savage, that's another. That son of a bitch. You let him walk, Judge. My wife is dead, isn't she? I don't know. I want to talk to my witness again, maybe. Maybe he can remember something else. I don't think so. Gordon Blue is dead. Brunette? Elise! 
Why would that even occur to you? Is your self-esteem that low? Is that what I've done to you? You send her to me and then you kill her? You're unraveling, detective. You're enamored with a ghost. Maybe not Billy made it quick. to me from the start you know at least came to me twice and i refused to help her what are you saying it's you too i know i broke my own rules no lecture just punch me in the face then patch it's over uh -uh, not for me Let me take you home, partner. What the hell's going on? I had to do it. I had to make it look like I was dead. Why? Why were you with Napoli? No. No, I wasn't with Napoli. He was in my car when I got in it. He forced me to drive to the river. Come on, get out. Don't get out. Don't hurt me. Over there. Come on, move, move, move. I move. Don't, don't push me. Come on, move. Look, I can't walk in this. Just move. Damn it. What? What? My shoe just broke. Well, take it off. Hurry up. Hurry up. I fought him off. I got away. I hid in the bushes till I could figure out a plan. Why don't you just run? I was freaking out, okay? He had a gun and the keys to my car. I figured the bushes were the safest place. He didn't come looking for you? He did. Then after a while, he, he just gave up. Yeah. It's done. Oh, she's fish food. Okay. Okay, hurry. Yeah. Ten minutes later, car pulled up. Where's my money? I saw Savage kill Napoli. And I knew I had to do something. So I tore part of my dress. Put it under the bridge to make it look like I jumped. Pulled a body from the river. Looks like it's Elise Laird. I'll meet you at the morgue. Okay. Do you hate me? You don't know the answer to that.
Body's bloated. Been in the water for a while. Fish have been biting, so there's not much of a face. She is a blonde, and the uh, dress we found matches the one that Mrs. Laird was wearing. You hungry, darling? No, thanks. Yana. Ready? That's her. That's at least. I'm gonna need uh, dental records, of course. Something to match the DNA with. She can rest in peace. I'm gonna take a couple of days off just to process everything, okay? Uh huh. I'll keep working the case. Why? It's over. I wanna know why she was involved with Savage. Why she jumped. You gonna tell me where you're going? Nope. Thanks for everything, though. Grandmother's place. I want to find this here. Hmm. You ever gonna take these off? Uh, why'd you become a cop? <laughs> to do good, right? Something like that. You still don't believe me, do you? Well, you answer my questions. I'll answer yours. Go take a shower. You stink. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming. The body of Elise Laird has been found and positively identified. Uh, Judge Laird would like to say a few words. I want to uh, express my gratitude to the police department, the uh, search teams, volunteers. It's... I'm sorry. Uh, everyone involved in this effort. My wife was a, was a wonderful woman, and her life was tragically cut short. Please turn that thing off. Obviously, we all wish that the, the outcome... Why would Kato Laird want to kill you? Kato and Savage are partners. Have been for years. That doesn't answer my question. Kato's in Savage's payroll to get his boys off in court, but not all of them. That would look bad, right? So once in a while, a sacrificial lamb has to get sent off to prison. And then the lamb has to die there so he doesn't talk. What's that got to do with you? My brother, Chet Rollins, is one of those lambs. He worked for Savage, knew way too much. Prison, he was raped in the shower. A bar of soap put down his throat. Dead. I'm sorry to hear that, but let's try it again. Why does Cato Laird want you dead? Before Chet went to prison, he sent me a letter through her mom so it couldn't be traced back to me. He told me everything about Cato and Savage. Why don't you just go to the cops? Well, the judge was crooked. I figured the police were as well. So I decided to avenge his murder on my own. I went to work at the strip club only as a waitress. It was financed by Savage. I hated the place, but I had to gain Savage's trust. And by having sex with him? 
No. How did you gain his trust? I saw the club's manager pocketing money. I told Savage. I became the bookkeeper, and I made sure that club turned a profit. With Savage, it's all about the money. What's it all about with you? Revenge. Now, I need a proof of Savage's dealings with Cato, so I decided to go after the judge. I got a job at the country club. I despised every moment with that man. I made sure he didn't get me pregnant. I pretend to have insomnia so I can search the house for proof of his dealings with Savage. But after a year, I've come up with nothing. Cato became suspicious. That's why he had me followed. That's why he wants me dead. But now do you believe me? I believe you, Lise. First time you call me by my name. <laughs> hey. Got us some food and got you some clothes, some women's things. Women's things? <laughs> well, I can see why you're still single. Oh. Hey. Hey, it's me. How are you? So so. You gonna tell me where you are? Nope. All right. Well, listen, I found something. Lincoln Elise Laird was savage. She had a brother, Chet Rollins, was one of Savage's dope dealers. You're good. Yeah, I am. They had different fathers, different last names, so it was easy to miss at first. Yeah, what do you make of that? Black brother, black sister. Elise worked for Savage, and maybe their relationship went further. Yeah, maybe you're right. Hey, can you check and see if any of the Savage boys' cases were presided over by Judge Laird? Why? What are you thinking? I gotta go. I'll uh, call you when I get back into town. Okay, bye. Just leaving a message for Dee Dee. You look nice. Liar. Mm. Is the food all right? Are you sure? Yeah. It's good. You know, if I had gone to the police straight away after Chet's letter, I never would have met you. Right. But you got to get cozy with Savage, jump into bed with Laird. I did what I had to do. I know what you did with Laird, with me, probably Savage, although you deny it. You can be such an ass sometimes. Yeah, I know. That's what they tell me. At least I'm not a, um... Whore? Go on, say it. Whore. Or do you want me to spell it for I'm you? I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. No, yes, yes, you did mean it. What, are you jealous or something? Oh, look, don't go turn this into some love story. Oh, don't flatter yourself.
been in love, I can tell. What happened? She walked. Stuffed me with cop. Is this... Is this something you're gonna regret? to me. You are playing again. Want to know how I found you? Called your mom. Told you you were in trouble, which you are. Said I wanted to help, which I did, but now I'm not so sure. Detective Bowen, I know you're upset. Don't talk to me. Dead people don't talk. I don't talk to dead people. Will you talk to me? You got a whole lot of explaining to do. Not only have you ruined your career for her, you've destroyed our partnership. Dee Dee, I'm sorry. It's I... too late. It's way too late. I mean, how can you sneak off with this slut? Hey, Dee Dee, she's not a slut. I should arrest her. For what? Shut up, you're dead, remember? Look, you got every right to be angry, okay? But it's not about you, Dee Dee. It's not even about me, it's about what's right. She faked her own death. To save her life. Hey, if I'm going to stop being a cop, I'm going to make it right, because we got an eyewitness to Savage killing Napoli. Who? Me. Oh, like you're a credible witness. Because Judge Laird and Robert Savage, they're a team. Excuse me? Now, I'm going to tell you all about it, but I'm going to get you a Diet Cola. You're going to sit down, relax. I got a plan. Got to take the gloves off, bend some rules. Will you help me? You okay with all this? You trust me, don't you? Can I trust you? I'm scared. Not for me, for you. You got my truck, so be careful. Can't have any Elise Laird sightings till this thing's over, okay? Detective Bowen, I really am sorry for everything. Hey, just wait here. I'll change. I'll be right back. Why couldn't you have told me? Why couldn't you have trusted me? Dee Dee, I trust you. Come on, I made a mistake. Right? Brenda bailed on me. Uh, I was empty. I met Elise, and I, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry. I checked all of Savage's boys that went to trial. Laird was on every case. Only one in four got a conviction. Well, we're going to convict that bastard, Savage, too. What happens if this doesn't work? I'll take the fall. You won't be affected. I am affected, damn it. Everything has changed. You want to back out? Shut up. Go get changed. Are we going to do this or what? That's my girl. Hey, Judge. How you doing? As well as can be expected, I guess. Good. You broke into my car? That's right, Judge. Get in. Suppose I don't. Get in. Is 
exerted, menacing, implied threat, very effective. So tell me, um, did you manage to screw my wife or did she just leave you hanging? Because you're not the only one. You're not unique, detective, and you're not half as tough as you pretend to be. Sorry, Judge. Sometimes I can't control him. What do you want? Hey, we know you're dirty, but I don't care. I want Savage. Okay. Good. Because tomorrow he's being arraigned for the murder of Napoli. What? I got a witness. Saw him do it by the bridge. Is he serious? Yes. The eyewitness also saw Napoli murder your wife. Well, she didn't. She didn't kill herself. It appears not. Savage shows up after Napoli does his dirty work. Savage shoots him. So tomorrow when that bastard comes to your courtroom, I want him held with no bond, right? No one else knows what we know about what happened to your wife. I want a conviction and a sentence that puts him away for life, because I got enough to put you away for life. Do we have a deal? Do exist. What are you doing here? Hello, Robert. I'm here to save your ass. You don't seem all that shocked to see me alive. I don't deal in surprises. So, is your husband aware of your current condition? I'm alive? No. So where have you been? With Hatcher. Delicious. How does it feel to have that man give up his soul for you? He wants you more than he wants me. I'm flattered. And I'm here to offer you a way out. Are you prepared to deal? Hands up. Now. Oh. What, you think I'm wired? Now. Same. I'm suspicious by nature. Blame my mother. All right, so how'd you do it? My death, the body? No, well, Robert Savage always delivers, you know that. I saw you kill Napoli. Ouch. Based on my testimony, Hatcher will arrest you. He's with Cato right now, preparing to put you away for life. By coming here, you're betraying a new boyfriend. Why? We have different goals. He wants you. I want Cato Laird. I'm listening. If I testify to what I saw, you will be convicted of murder. But if I recant, say I shot Napoli in self-defense, well, then Hatcher's got nothing on you. Oh, a generous offer. But if you recant, you'll incriminate yourself. Oh, please. But you think he'll send me off to prison? That man has fallen for me hard. I've made sure of it. So what do you have planned for Cato Laird? I want him destroyed. Out of commission. We have a deal? Put the gun away, Robert. I know who you really are, Elise. Jet's sister. Cato and I knew all along. Me then. Well, you were useful for me to keep tabs on my partner. I don't trust anyone, including you. I'm the bookkeeper. I record every transaction. Kid who works for me, not the other way around. Bye-bye, Elise. You're about to be dead again.
Hey! Cover her. I call for backup. Backup? I don't want backup! Freeze! Head. Shut up! Check her purse. She's probably got a gun. Yeah, gun. You know what I want? Right now, a confession. Hatch, don't do this. Wait for backup. Dee Dee, get out of here. Take her with you. I don't want you to see this. It's between me and Savage, right? I want a confession. Right now. Chet Rollins, Napoli, all of them. Give it to me. Hatch, you're losing it. Don't do this. You'll lose everything. Say hello to Freddie Morris. Drop the gun, Hatch. Put the gun down now, you idiot. Hatch, please don't. Shut up! I'm gonna kill you, or I'm gonna die doing it. Confess, I'm gonna kill you! Confess! Okay, okay! I did Freddy, Napoli. I ordered the head on Chad, and on Gordon. Hatch, you good? Whirly, this jackass needs an ambulance. That was quite the performance, you two. Yeah, I said the same for you guys. What? This was all an act? I had to make you believe I was on edge, right? So you were No, actually, I wasn't. You know, it's not very high tech, but it still does the job. Go on, you know you want to. Just do it. It's the only way we're ever gonna get back to normal. Orange isn't his color. Sure looks pretty on him. All right, nine letter word for confound. Obfuscate. That's good. All rise. You see it? Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Adams. Before we begin, may I request that we remove these restraints from my client? Denied. This is a bond hearing on a murder charge. Ms. Nelson? Your Honor, due to the seriousness of the charges against the defendant and with his extreme flight risk, we respectfully request the bell be denied. Kendall Laird, you're under arrest for conspiracy to murder Chet Rollins. Deputy, remove this man from this courtroom immediately. Stand down, Deputy. This is my courtroom! What is this? You're under arrest, Judge. You killed my brother. He was going to expose you and Savage. Captain, this woman is delusional. She killed a oh, man in years, our home. Oh, for years, you've been obviously... taking money from Savage in exchange for favorable rules. Who is going to believe this woman? She's unhinged and unstable. She's totally insane. Save your breath. We have Savage's computer with all your transactions, all the payoffs, the secret bank account in the Cayman Islands. We got it all. You said me up? You can thank your wife for this and her boyfriend Hatcher. You are doing it. Now that's damn hard to believe. What a shocker, huh, sweetheart? It's time to pay for your sins, Kato. You two deserve each other. Kato Lair, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. Good!
parents invited us to Sunday dinner. That's the third invitation in three months. They're driving me nuts, okay? Come on. Your father's a Baptist minister. Unlike his worst nightmare. Look, my dad is not in the condemning business. He's in the forgiving business. But what's to forgive? Nothing. Savage is evil. So was Kate O'Leary. Not you. Nineteen thirty-three, mint condition. Welcome back. We gotta go downtown. They found a dead body in the sewer. That's what the captain gives us? A body in the sewer? Our first day back? This job stinks. That was so not funny. You smiled. <laughs> No, I didn't. Hey, you. Hatch, I'm driving. Just give me the keys. I'm driving. Deal with it. 